Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is part three of the course on building data science with JavaScript. And today I want to talk a bit about the transport that we're going to use for our microservices and the first microservices that we are going to build. Uh, so if you haven't watched the previous video, uh, you should go and do that first, of course. Uh, but you know, last time we talked about the general architecture and what the microservices are. As I said, where uh, microservices generally communicate over one common transport that is accessible to multitude of languages. So in this case, we're going to use RabbitMQ, which is a message bus uh, with uh, quite a lot of history, actually, and quite a lot of uh, enterprise support, worked great, and provides a lot of features. So we're going to have a quick look at it. If you want to have more in-depth look, I will put links in the description. It has amazing documentation that will explain basically all you need to know about it. But uh, basically, it supports multiple messaging protocols, we're going to be using uh, AMQP protocol, uh, or it's actually AMQP. So it's a protocol in the end. Anyway, um, we're going to be uh, it supports message queuing. So we can basically um, put up the messages and uh, the messages will be in there until consumers say, hey, I want to actually read it and do something to it. So you know, this way we can distribute the load and all that kind of stuff supports delivery acknowledgements. That means that uh, when you put the message out, unless the receiver says, hey, now I have got the message and I've done what needs to be done with it, the message will still remain in the bus and will be locked in there un unless consumer disconnects or, you know, says no. Uh, it supports flexible routing, which is also a feature we are going to use to some extent. So basically, the idea is that you have the message bus and you have the channels. And channels ha can have roots. So for example, uh, this example shows you I think this is not the best example. Yeah, there's, there's a logging example that shows it pretty great. So we have a producer that dispatches a lot of logs and logs have different levels, right? You can have error log and have info log and you can have warning log. So we want to have one consumer that gets all of those logs and then the other one that is special one that only gets errors. And this is something that can be very easily done with um, RabbitMQ. They, uh, there's uh, this is the source code in Python the examples, but they also have examples in all the languages. Uh, if you can see here, including JavaScript, of course, uh, which is you know pretty works pretty well with the whole RabbitMQ stuff. Okay, and um, in exchange types, but I don't think we need to dwell into it. So if you're interested, you can go ahead and look. Once again, I highly recommend uh, looking through RabbitMQ tutorials. They are amazing. And they basically teach you all the concepts that you need to know about the rabbit. Okay, so there are multiple ways, of course, to use uh, RabbitMQ within nodes. Um, and uh, we are going to use MQP lib, which is uh, one of the node.js libraries that provides access to RabbitMQ in a relatively simple manner. Um, let me just increase the size here. And we're going to go to the reference. Uh, so as you can see here, it provides the abstractions for channel skews, um, and so on and so forth. It is a bit tricky to get it first, because you need to understand all of those concepts. So uh, again, you know, if you want to go read the docs are pretty good as well. Uh, if you understand the concept, it will be very easy to connect and manage everything it works on promises as well as callbacks. Um, this is what we will use underneath. But to simplify it, I have a simple library that is called micro work. Um, that's big that allows you to create the um, scalable microservices using node.js and RabbitMQ in literally like three lines of code. So the way it works is pretty simple. You create a new runner, which is an instance of micro work where you just say, where's your rabbit host and what kind of exchange you want to use. And then all you do you subscribe to a specific topic. So in this case, you know, it's a topic to work. And then you get a when the message comes the topic gets a message, which will be either a string or decoded JSON. And you get a reply function, which can reply to a specific topic uh, with a anything any data basically that comes in, right. So in this case, here's a master that sends uh, hello to do work topic. And this worker will append hello world to it and send it back to response topic and master listens to response topic, you know, that's basically it. So we're going to use micro work to do that. And uh, the first service we're going to build is open critic input service, which will use open critic if you're not familiar with it, that is not what I wanted to do. If you are not familiar with it is um, review aggregation sites for video games, uh, that is nicer and better and more open than the Metacritic. And you know, I like it more. So we're going to use it and they have a pretty nice API, which is not documented, but that's not a major problem. 
we're going to use this to uh, get um, game, for example, Destiny 2, right? So we're going to get the game. We're going to get all the reviews for the game uh, from the critics. Um, wait a second, where was the? I think, yeah, it loads it. So there you go. There's the reviews. They have a link, and this is what we're interested in, right? So then we're going to scrape all the reviews and pipe them into the RabbitMQ. And this is how it looks. So we have our open critic input service, right? Uh, it uses uh, microwork for communicating with uh, Rabbit. We're going to use node fetch to fetch the data from the URLs. Uh, unfluff is going to be used to process data. I will talk about that in a moment. Then we'll use Cheerio to fall back for the cases where unfluff doesn't work. We're going to use node tap and knock for testing. Um, Quite simple. Okay, so let's look at the source code. Uh, first of all, I have the logger here, which is an instance of uh, Vincent logger, which is pretty simple. Uh, basically, the idea is that I will only log specific level of um, logs, depending on where we're running. If we're running in production, I only want to see info. If we're running locally, I want to see debug. And if we're running it as testing, I want to want to see errors. That's about it. You know, very simple. Now, index is, this is the whole service. It's uh, 72 lines, 74, okay, 74 lines with all the comments and everything, you know, very simple. I wrote it in one and a half hour during the stream uh, while reverse engineering the OpenCritic API. So as you can see, microservices really are very small and very easy to write. So what does it do? Well, um, here you go, there's our main function, right? As you can see here, it creates the microwork instance that connects to localhost. We will have to change that later uh, because, you know, obviously where we're going to deploy it is not going to be localhost, but we'll adjust it later. It subscribes to OpenCritic topic and listens for the requests to review a specific game because this is how it's going to be work. So uh, we're going to send the request from the UI and tell, hey, I want to reviews for, or I want a data for this game. Uh, so if it gets the data, it gets the game from it. And, you know, if there's no game, no data, it just says, hey, I can do anything and returns. If there is, it um, scrapes the data and replies to the store microservice, which we'll implement later. So scrape reviews uh, does very simple thing. First of all, it gets the game from the OpenCritic API, which is very simple because they provide JSON API. You know, it's just like, okay, here's a criteria, which is our name of the game. Then you just get JSON and we get the first result, which is the top hit, which is usually what we want, right? So once we got that, we get extended game data, which includes the list of reviews and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so again, this uses the OpenCritic API and quite easy to do because we just put in the ID and do the fetch request and done. You know, we return the merge data and that's it. Now the interesting part, we get the reviews. So extended data contains this reviews field that contains a bunch of things, including uh, URIs and short like two liner or one liner, whatever they call it here, this stuff that is like, you know, the ex ex excerpt from the review. Uh, so what we are doing, we're actually interested in the full text, right? So we have this enrich review with text thing uh, that is uh, getting the enrich review. And then this is what we exactly send to the store. We also use the sleep command here, which is defined above here, which is just set timeout wrapped into promise, you know, to simplify it. We sleep for one second because we don't want to hammer the open critic and we don't want to hammer those websites more than one request per second because that's just not nice. And, you know, you can get banned very fast if you do that. Right, let's talk about the enrich review with text. So uh, it's actually quite trivial. So first of all, we fetch the text from the document. So it's gonna be like full HTML here from the external URI from that review, which is usually like, you know, whatever the text of review is. Then we run the extractor, which is this unfluff library. So we can have a look uh, here, node unfluff. Uh, this is a part of Python library that basically automatically tries to extract the body content from an HTML document along with some metadata. So uh, basically, you know, if you throw in the article, if you open any article online, there will be a bunch of things that is not exactly relevant to the text of the article as, you know, ads, links to the related article, comments, and all that other bonkers that you don't really care about, right? So Unfluff removes all of that and gives you only the main content, or at least tries to do that. So if it completes, if it, if it succeeds, we actually just add the text and the original HTML as well as the extracted data to the document and return it. If it fails, we use Cheerio to load the page and just get the whole body because, you know, why the hell not? And get the text from it as the, uh, basically our data source, which, you know, it won't be really clean, but then Flav succeeds in like, I don't know, 90%, which is sufficient enough for this case. 
And that's about it. So basically it, it does this sequentially. As soon as it gets the article, it sends it back to message bus to storage service. Uh, storage service will handle storing and sending it to the processing. And uh, this is what we're gonna do during the next live stream. Um, we are using Docker once again to start the rabbit. As you can see here in NPM scripts, we have rabbit start, which starts the rabbit MQ and exposes the ports and all that kind of stuff. We start the rabbit MQ management container which contains the, um, on the port 1567 uh, to there is the management UI, which will allow you to actually see how your, you know, what kind of queues you have, what kind of names do they have, how many packages go around and stuff like this. We're gonna use it a bit later uh, for now, it's just like this. Um, we do need to talk about testing as well. So um, since microservices, there's gonna be a lot of them, right? You have to be sure that they actually do what you want them to do. And this is what we are gonna do. So we're gonna write tests for each and every of them. Again, tests are not that big. There's like 100 lines, 94, uh, slightly more than the unit test itself, but purely because we have a lot of test data here that should be returned. So I'm using knock to mock responses from OpenCritic to make sure they're always the same. And you know, we actually can test that it parses everything correctly. Other than that, the testing is trivial. We start the test master, which will listen to the responses. We subscribe to the store. So we basically mock the storage here and say, okay, I listen to this, I check the data validity, and then I just end the test and that's it. Okay, you know, very straightforward, nothing super fancy here. Um, yeah, I think that basically covers the first microservice. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. Uh, the next live stream should happen sometime this week. As usual, I'll announce it on Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, wherever, Discord as well, of course. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching and as usual, I'll see you next time. Bye.